I'm mad as hell and I'm not gonna take it anymore, so I'm gonna eat Sam's macaroni and cheese until I explode. Creamy, gooey, delicious macaroni and cheese. And if you can't make this in isolation, well, I just need to come over and have a talk with you. We're coming to you from our new home during isolation. The Little Italy Food Hall. The barren, quiet, lifeless Little Italy Food Hall. It won't always be like this, but for now it is. But it's the perfect spot for us to shoot because, well, there's nobody around and I can get more than six feet between me and Maxi Boy. We start our macaroni and cheese with some onion, some garlic, and some jalapeno. I have in front of me our three key vegetable ingredients. We simply wipe this first, and then we cut them up into small pieces. And yes, I've left my knife someplace and I don't have it, so I'll have to use a substandard knife. If for some reason you're not a green onion fan, of course you could use white, you could use yellow, you could use red even. I'm not happy with this knife, I gotta admit. And when you're done with the green onion, on we go to the jalapeno. All right, so we want the jalapeno, you take the sides off, it's a piece, there's just like nothing. There's nothing to sharpen with. Ah! So we use a knife service. It's pretty common for many restaurants. Uh, we get a bunch of knives. We use them, they come in once a week, they take them all away and they bring sharp ones. This is not one of those, but I mean, okay, that's better. We really don't need seeds here, I don't think. If you want seeds, you can have them, but and then you just want to cut these thin. You want to be cognizant, again, of how somebody's going to eat your food and munching down on a giant piece of jalapeno might not be what everybody wants because not everybody can handle their heat. So I think one whole jalapeno should probably be fine in this. And then the clove of garlic that we're just going to do this. Papers on. Oops. Paper's now off. Mostly. Same thing here. Ah, oh, for God's sakes. Don't put that in. Same thing here. We just want this really minced up. I want my own kitchen back. I want my own cutting boards back. I want my own knife. I love a cutting board that doesn't rumble. Okay, <laughs> look at it. it. Amazing. And when we get to the spot where we're happy with our cutting, we put three tablespoons of butter in our cast iron pan. It starts to melt. That was so anticlimactic. But I don't want to burn this butter. That's not the flavor I'm going for. So when it starts to melt, now we'll add our vegetables. Green onion, the jalapeno, and the garlic and the garlic. We'll give this a couple minutes to start to get fragrant and soften a bit. In the meantime, we're gonna add our pasta to the boiling water and this is what I have. And I apologize, I don't have the box anymore and I don't know what that is, but they're, they're rough on the outside, which means they'll hang on to the cheese sauce. And they're squirrely, which means in all these little... It's like an ear. It's like you could screw that into an ear. Somebody's going to know what that is. Somebody Put knows that in what the that comments. is. Please tell me what the hell this is. But it goes into our boiling water, but not before we salt it really nicely. Heavily salted water is always best for pasta. It loves it. And then in goes the pasta. You always stir. Always stir right away. If you don't, they're going to stick together and clump, and that's just death. So when you think they're good, they probably are. Now let's go back to our big cast iron pan. Nice. That is starting to smell insane right here. 
Insane. So that was three tablespoons of butter. Our next add is a couple tablespoons of flour. And we mix. A roux, a thickening agent. We make this green onion, garlic, jalapeno into a thick paste. We cook it for about a minute. And then we add a cup of cream. Lovely. Followed by a cup of milk. Lovely. About a tablespoon and a half of Dijon. And we continue to mix. And now over the next few minutes, as you can imagine, this is gonna start to thick. Oh, for God's sakes, why do I always have to spill? Everything is going so nicely. You don't need a lot of heat, but you definitely want heat to make this nice. Stir it and you're gonna see it'll start to thicken by itself. In the meantime, we'll come back, we'll check our pasta. I can just tell they're not ready yet. You can feel it. We're probably halfway. Gonna be good. And when it starts to thicken like this, when you can draw a line and it doesn't fill in right away, and it's gorgeous, we turn off the heat and we start adding cheese. And I'm gonna go about two cups of white cheddar, a cup or so at a time. If you throw it in all at once, it's just gonna clump. You're gonna get a ball of cheese and who wants that? Look how gorgeous that is. Another handful. Stir. You could use white cheddar, you could use orange cheddar. I think the white looks better. You could use Monterey Jack and throw in what would be about our last half a cup or so. On Croyab. Once it's mixed, look at that. Sheets of melty cheese. In comes the pasta. Oh my goodness. Let's swap this for this. Okay, I just don't even think you could find a creamier. And by the way, we're not baking this. This is done. So we haven't seasoned it yet. Let's add some salt and pepper. Oh my God. I think if you said, hey, I'm feeling like some cheesy macaroni, you'd be pretty happy with this. I'm gonna let this sit for one minute and do one quick thing to put on top. And that's this. I have a little melted butter in this pan. I'm gonna just add some breadcrumbs, some panko breadcrumbs. Season that with a little salt and pepper. We'll mix that. And we're just gonna let it just toast a little bit, get a little bit of color on it. And then after a minute or so, see it's starting to get a little brown? That's what you want. Let that continue. I'm going to add a little green onion to it. And continue the browning, the crisping, the gorgeousing. Kind of a bit more. And when you get it where you want, and for me it looks like this, we're ready to go. And here we are. Wow. Look at this. Look at this crazy creaminess. All right, wait. We've also got like the world's best crispy breadcrumbs to go on top. So we'll make a little bowl, not too much. And then some of this. And the beautiful part of the crumbs is that if somebody doesn't want it, somebody doesn't have to have it. Though I don't know why they wouldn't. And then we look. 
we stand back we see the green onion the jalapeno the crispy gorgeous crumbs this amazingly cheesy inside of an ear pasta and we cultivate the perfect bite that for us is going to look like this and we mm. A wave of delicious richness. Not too rich. I'm getting the crisp from the, the panko. Amazing. A little hint of Dijon floating around in the background. But just the creamy, white cheddar, delicious texture. You make this. And you're saying, F you, coronavirus. You can keep me from work and you can keep me from going to the park. But from you, my normal kitchen. From, you can keep me from my normal kitchen, but you cannot keep my mouth and my stomach from living their normal, everyday, super delicious life. I'm mad as hell and I'm not gonna take it anymore, so I'm gonna eat Sam's macaroni and cheese until I explode. No, we don't want that, but we do want this. So, we used to say, don't eat the same thing all the time. Now we're saying, don't eat the same thing the same way all the time. Make some changes to uh, your kitchen life. And you'll be very happy you did. See ya.